Falls noch. Sustain your shout. Confirmation in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Performance. Where? Performance. Where? There in your life. It's happening tonight. I welcome everyone to the Miracle Arena tonight in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and bless your name. Good God, loving God, compassionate Christ, sympathetic Christ, Holy Ghost divine, mighty and powerful. I pray, Lord, you send forth your power, your word, confirmed and performed tonight in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Miracles tonight. Amen. Salvation tonight. Amen. Healing tonight. Amen. Deliverance tonight. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It is done in every life. Here at the Alpha location, right, left, center, back, healing, deliverance, and miracle. Yeah. Online, everywhere, healing, deliverance, and miracle. Yeah. Lord, tonight, help your people to have that faith in you. Because you have said, as we believe, it will be unto us. You believe tonight for your miracle, it will be unto you. Yeah. Signs and wonders, it will be unto you. Yeah. You receive tonight. Yeah. You believe tonight. Yeah. You testify tonight. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. You can see that the blessing of God. The Lord bless you already. Tonight, we are looking at great salvation. Now, everything God does is great. Why? Because he himself is great. Little people do little things. Low-level people do low-level things. And people who are grounded, they do grounded things. But the high God of heaven, but... The highest, the one that is higher than the highest is high, is great, is magnanimous. Therefore, what he does, he does in a big, big way. Big miracle coming to you tonight. The topic is great salvation through faith in the great Savior, Jesus Great. Savior, great. Redeemer, great. Our Lord, great. And he does great things. Tonight, great salvation. Great healing. Great deliverance. And great dominion in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation. How shall we escape? How do we escape suffering? When we neglect the great salvation coming from the great Savior. How do we escape the pain, the disease, if we neglect the one that gives the great healing? How shall we escape? How shall we escape the trauma? How shall we escape the brain disturbance if we neglect the great deliverer? He has salvation great, healing great, forgiveness great, and he has blessing great. And God said he is as high as heaven. And from heaven, the rain of miracle will fall tonight. And anyone, have you noticed? I'm sure you have. When the rain is falling, everyone that stays outside and does not go for cover, the rain will fall on that person. Am I right? Young, 
old man, woman, and the person who is on this side, on that side, whatever the religion, whatever the tradition, if you stay outside where the rain is falling, the rain will fall on you. And tonight, there you are, rain of miracle from heaven. Rain of salvation from heaven. Rain of forgiveness from heaven. Just stay there. Just stay there. If you don't dodge, if you don't run away, you will not escape miracle tonight. How shall we escape? If we neglect, if we reject so great salvation, then it says that this salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord is by the Lord. You know, some people say salvation, born again. Uh -huh. I understand that's for those young people, they're in the scripture union. No, this for everybody. This for me. I said this for me. I said this is for me. It was spoken first by the Lord. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved, spoken by the Lord. Call upon me and I will answer you, spoken by the Lord. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, spoken by the Lord. And the salvation from the Lord is what comes to you tonight. And it says, and it was confirmed by them unto us, that heard him. And I have heard, I have experienced, and I'm confirming it to you. And the moment you accept, and the moment you believe, confirmation will come in your life. Can this person be saved? If he believes, confirmation in your life. Can this person be forgiven? Look at what he has done. If you believe, forgiveness has come to you tonight. If you don't run away from the rain of healing, of forgiveness, of salvation pouring down, the Lord will pour salvation into your life tonight. Great salvation through faith in the great Savior. We're looking at three things here. Number one, we're looking at great forgiveness. Great forgiveness through the great dependence on the Lord, our high priest. Number two, it's great faith for great, great deliverance from the highest heaven. The highest power, the power of the Lord is the highest. The power of the Lord is greater than your limitation. Give me a good amen. amen. Greater than your disease, greater than your infirmity. And that power tonight, the highest power you can think about, is going to operate in your life. Amen. You know when the doctor prays, they say, lie down. You don't say no, I stand up. If you stand, when they say lie down, and can they operate on you? If they say now release yourself to the hand of the doctor, no. 50 50. He takes 50, I take 50. How can you be operated? But tonight, as you stay like that, and you wait for the Lord, if it says rise up, you rise up. If it says raise up your hand, you don't ask, why should I raise my hand? You raise your hand. If it says lay your hand there, you lay your hand there. If it says when you hear the final, amen, everything is gone. Say yes, sir. You say that final, amen. You open your eyes like this. You open your eyes to miracle. Because it will operate on you tonight. Am I talking to somebody there? You got it, you will get the miracle. And then the gracious freedom. Gracious freedom and great dominion. Everything that ruled over you before, you are going to rule over everything tonight. Something in my head does not allow me to concentrate. 
the Lord will drive it away. And then you will have dominion over that thing, whatever it is in your head. Here in my tummy, I cannot put any other food inside. Yes, I've not eaten today, but the place is full. What, don't worry, at the mention of the name of Jesus tonight, that thing will vanish away. I cannot stand, I have this pain, arthritis. If I sit, I cannot stand. If I stand, I cannot bend. Don't worry, the Lord is coming your way tonight. Healed. Delivered. You are set free. Everything that binds you down. Everything is taking away tonight. You're on the wheelchair. Just wait for that final amen. You will jump up. Amen. You will stand. Amen. You will walk. Tonight, confirmation in your life. Tonight, performance in your life. Uh, look at this. Look at number one. Number one is great forgiveness through great dependence on our high priest. Uh, look at uh, this in Mark chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 3. We're told of these four men that came unto him. And they brought, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of form. One person could not hold his hand and bring him. Why? Because the, the legs cannot stand, the waist could not stand, it could not bend, it could not move. Only one person could not help. Two people could not help. Three people could not help. They have to put him on a stretcher. And then one at that corner, one at this corner, one at this corner, one at that corner. Four of them, they brought him. Tonight, if they brought you, you'll walk home by yourself. Yeah. And in verse, in verse 4, it says in verse 4, And when they could not come near unto him for the prayers, for the crowd, for the multitude, they uncovered the roof where he was. Now you understand. If you are sitting down and they are uncovering the roof just above you, you'll hear the sound. You know they are doing something there, but Jesus was never distracted. He knew. Even as they climbed up there, he knew. And as we came over here, he knew. As we were coming out of the bus, coming out of the taxi, and I'm feeling pain there, carry me gently. He knows everything. And now he knows where you are seated. He knows where you are there lying down. He is not distracted by your pain. By the noise, by anything. And so they opened up the truth where he was. And when they had broken it up, hammer, bah, 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 breaking it up, he heard and he knows they're breaking it up so that they can bring you to his presence. And you are now in his presence. And in the presence of the Lord, there is power. There's power here tonight. There is performance. There's performance here tonight. And then it says, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Look at verse 5. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith. When Jesus saw their faith. Not just hope. I think something will happen. No. Not just the feeling. I feel something may happen. No. When Jesus saw not their wealth, not their money, not when Jesus saw their expectation, but he saw their faith. The faith that said we couldn't go through that crowd will go up and once we let down the man in his presence, there will be power. Tonight, 
power. Tonight, power. And tonight, healing. When he saw their faith, he said, Unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Was he forgiven? Was he saved? Was he crying? He didn't cry. Was he shouting, shouting? He didn't shout. In his heart, he believed, I have come to the great Savior. That's all. That's all. That's all. I've come to the great Savior. I've sinned against God. I've come to his beloved Son, who, whenever he pronounces forgiveness, the Father never says no to him. And the Lord is pronouncing forgiveness on you today. And God the Father will never say no. God the Father, on your behalf, is saying yes. For your forgiveness is saying, say now. It says yes for your salvation tonight. It says yes for your forgiveness tonight. It says yes for your redemption tonight. Jesus said, son, he called him son. Because he knew forgiveness was coming to him. Otherwise, if forgiveness was not coming, he should have said sinner. But because he knew he was going to pronounce forgiveness on him. And the father was going to say, yes. Therefore now, he said, son, that sins be forgiven thee. And I take the word of Jesus, and I bring down the word of Jesus. This is not my word. This is word for you. Daughter, your sins be forgiven thee. Son, your sin be forgiven thee. He was forgiven. And then some people were wondering, you know, he was not talking to them, those Pharisees. Those Sadducees, you understand? Sadducees, sad, you see? They were sad. Their sins had not been forgiven. And they was always wondering, wondering, wondering. And they were sad, you see? Because they did not believe the word. But the man, he believed his sins were forgiven. Tonight I believe your sins are forgiven. And so while the Pharisees and the sad, you see, what they were wondering, he said in verse 9, look at verse 9. Verse 9, whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say everything he says, have you noticed, everything happens, confirmed, performed, that same moment on the sea, the sea was stormy. He just said the word, peace be still. Instantaneously, peace came and the storm quietened. Because everything he says is always fulfilled at that time. And he said, is it easier to say or harder to say that sins be forgiven thee or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, it says, But that ye may know, you will know tonight. You will know it in your heart. You will know it in your body. You will know it by your sight that comes back. You will know it by the strength that comes back into your life. You will know it by the pain that departs from your back, your knees, everywhere. You will know it by the clearing of the pain of the cancer from your body. Tonight, I will know it. Tonight, I will know it. It says, but that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth, power on earth. Somebody shout, power on earth. Why didn't he say power 
in heaven. There's no sin in heaven to be forgiven. There is no sickness in heaven to be healed. There is no mental problem in heaven to be delivered from. It's only on earth. And he said, the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. And then he says to the sick of the palsy. Look at verse 11 now. In verse 11, I say unto thee, I say unto thee. Now, you may not uh, understand. When Jesus speaks, the sea will hear his voice and obey. That's why when he was sleeping on the pillow and they, they tapped him and they beat him and they woke him up, don't you care that we we'll perish? He just got up majestically because the master of the ocean, of the sky, of the sea, of the demon of disease, peace be still. And the sea heard his word and calmed down. He looked at the tree as they were passing by. No fruit, he just spoke the word. No man eat fruit out of this tree anymore. And the tree heard. And when Jesus speaks tonight, your sickness will hear. Your cancer will hear. Uh, you may not, you may still be wondering how, why, and all that, but the cancer understands authority has spoken, the voice from heaven has spoken, and before you know what, before you open your eyes, cancer packs its load, is gone. Because, because when Jesus speaks, cancer hears, deafness hears, Blind eyes hear, and all your infirmities, they hear. You are free. Arise and take up thy bed and go to thy and go thy way into thine house. Look at verse 12. Verse 12 says, and immediately. Somebody shout, immediately. You see. All those things on earth, they hear the word from heaven instantaneously. Instantaneously. Look at Moses with a rod in the hand. And the armies of Egypt were coming behind them. And God said, stretch your rod. Stretch your rod. And while the you know, Israelites were still wandering and crying, he stretched the rod and the sea understood that symbolic language immediately and they parted. You see, we are the people wondering, uh, you know, what do I do? He has spoken the word. Should I? Should I not? When Jesus speaks to your disease, the disease does not dilly dally immediately. The, the disease will say, it tells me to go out, I go out. It tells your sickness tonight, go out, it will go out. Blindness, go out, it will go out. Deafness, go out, it will go out. Infirmity, weakness, disease in your body. Once they hear the voice of Christ, you may not even understand, but that disease understands. And we're told immediately he arose and he took up the bed and he went forth before them and then before them all in so much that they were all amazed. You'll be amazed tonight. You'll be surprised tonight how quickly that disease will hear the voice of the Lord and it's gone. And we're told that a glorified God saying, we have never we never saw it on this fashion. That person by your side, lying down, and you're wondering, well, you're not wondering anymore. Was that weakness? Hear the voice of the Son of God. That person is going to get up tonight. That wheelchair will be empty tonight. 
those crutches will be thrown down tonight. And then the people who see, they will be amazed. When somebody is amazed, what does he do? Does he keep quiet? Just looking? Not moving? No. When you're amazed, you shout. When you're amazed, you clap your hand. When you're amazed, you, you say something. I never saw it like this. And if God can do this, he will do my own. He will do my own. He will do yours tonight in Jesus' name. That is the appointed high priest that takes all our infirmity away today. Great forgiveness through the great dependence we have on our high priest. Forgiveness has come. Amen. Amen. Healing has come. Amen. And we're amazed at the wonderful things God does. Look at point number two here. Point number two, we're looking at great faith for great deliverance from the highest power. Uh, you've had testimonies of people I went here, I tried what he told me to try, and I didn't get healed. No problem. It's because that sickness or disease, that problem or challenge was greater than the solution you are trying to find. You can rub it, you can swallow it, you can whatever, inject it, but if the sickness is higher, then the solution you are trying to bring, it doesn't work. And then you go to another one, you go to another one, and the sickness, the disease, and the problem is up there, high, high, but not as high as heaven. It is same to that one. And now when you come to the power that is higher than all the people you have gone to and all the sicknesses you have, whether they are five or ten or twenty, the higher power, higher than them all, will clear everyone away tonight. And will come with that great faith, that great faith in the great deliverer that gives us great deliverance because this is the one that is higher than them all. We're looking at Matthew chapter 8. We're looking at verse 5. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 5, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. That word means begging him, pleading with him now. A servant at a challenge. This man was a centurion. Centurion, century, saint. That means he had authority over 100 soldiers. But the sickness was higher than his power. Higher than his possibilities by himself. Higher than all the soldiers under his authority. And now he heard of somebody that has the highest power. And in anything, in everything, there is he that is higher than the highest. His name, Jesus, he will heal you tonight. He will deliver you tonight. And I were told in verse 6, in verse 6, and saying, Lord, you know, when you are a master yourself, a centurion over all the 100 soldiers, and they're saying, sir, sir, to you. But now you come to Christ, you understand, this one is higher than I am. The problem I cannot solve, he can't solve. He can forgive, he can save, he can deliver. And he called him Lord. My servant lies at home sick of the palsy. Grievously tormented. 
uh, when this a soldier, a centurion, can say, the servant was grievously tormented. He was helpless. He saw that servant rolling in pain, groaning in pain, and writhing like a snake in pain. And he couldn't help. He had to stop every other thing. And he didn't go west, didn't go east, didn't go north, didn't go south. He came to the one that has the higher power. You're coming tonight to Jesus Christ. He has the higher power. Highest power. And whatever might have taken authority and dominion over your life. The Lord sets you free tonight in Jesus' name. Look at verse 7, verse 7. And Jesus says unto him, I will come and heal him. No doubt, I will come when I get there, he will be healed. You have to have that confidence. Christ is coming to me. He is coming tonight. And when he gets to me, I will be healed. Where are you? Tonight. I say tonight. Once he comes, once he pronounces the word on you, I will come and heal him. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come into my, under my roof, but speak the word only. Speak the word only. Say that. Say it again. And my servant shall be healed. This man had more understanding than people who have been going to church for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. This man said, no, you don't need to touch me. <laughs> there are people that have been going to church for 20 years, 25 years. I want to see him. I want, let him touch me. Let him put the hand on my head. I, I was the matter. He says, speak the word only. I want to see him. Let him pour a whole bottle of oil on my head. Is it that serious? The one that is higher than every problem in life. He says, he is here. He doesn't need to push you. He doesn't need to touch you. He doesn't need to pour oil on you. He doesn't have to make you smell incense. But speak the word only. The word you are hearing now is the word of Christ. I'm not Christ, but he gave the word. And he said, this is the word tell them this the word is coming from him and when he gets to you healing will take place yeah. look at verse 9 in verse 9 he said for i am a man under authority he says i understand authority having soldiers under me and i say to this man go and he goes. The centurion said, I'm a soldier and I have soldiers under me. And when I speak to those uh, soldiers under me, they never argue with me. And I know you. You have authority over 100% of all the sicknesses on earth. And when you speak, like my servants, like my soldiers, don't argue with me. Cancer cannot argue with Christ. Rheumatism cannot argue with Christ. Bleeding, blood issue cannot argue with Christ. Prostate cancer cannot argue with Christ. Blindness cannot argue with Christ. Long standing sicknesses cannot argue with Christ. He said, I say to this man, go, and he goes. And when you speak to this demonic personality, 
troubling my servants, demons cannot argue with Christ. Amen. Don't you see in the Bible? Look at this man coming from the tomb. And he had a legion, thousands of demons. And he said, have you come to torment me? And Jesus was looking. Don't cast us here. Don't cast us. Jesus was looking. And one word, go. 2,000 demons led. Just one syllable word. And when that word comes to you tonight, go. Demons will go. Diseases will go. Because disease or demon never argues with Christ. I say to this one, go, and he goeth. And unto this, unto another, come, and he cometh. The man was saying, I know you. You are Lord. You have authority. You see, healing come, healing will come. Deliverance come, deliverance will come. Joy come. Joy will come to you tonight because neither sickness nor healing argues with Christ. Healing. Somebody shout healing. healing. Come to this daughter of mine. Well, healing say no. She is short, she is tall. She is black. I don't want to go there. Can healing say that? No. no. Go, it goes. Come, it comes. And Jesus is telling healing tonight, deliverance tonight, dominion tonight. Go there, it will arrive there. Go there, it will arrive there. And tonight, tonight, it tells every disease, every sickness, Go, it will not remain there. Or oh, I say, do this, and he doeth it. Look at verse 10. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and he said unto them, He says to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so. Great faith? No, not in Israel. What's great faith? The faith that believes that when the word is spoken and is sent to me, sickness will vanish. That's the great faith. He sent his word and he healed them. And you believe that God says, I am God, I change not. And the way he created the world, the world, it says, let there be light, there was light, immediately. Let the seas go this side, one, one part, it was like that. By the word, and the same word has not changed, that is coming from the Lord, from the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and the word with the highest power, comes to you tonight, those deaf ears are open. And that tummy of a man that looks like she is pregnant, he is pregnant, all that is seen that is packed inside there, I say, come out. Immediately it comes out. And the elephantiasis, legs swollen, like big, big bags. And I say, be healed immediately. Because it's not my word, it's his word. I'm just the mouthpiece, I'm the microphone that is taking his word and saying it to you, and you are healed. And you are delivered. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 tells us, and Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. Where are you? Be it done unto thee. Be it confirmed in your body. Be it performed in your life. 
I rejoice with you tonight. You are healed. Tonight you are delivered. Tonight you are forgiven. Tonight you are saved. Yeah. We'll look at number three now. Point number three is gracious freedom and great dominion through the Holy Prince. He's our Prince, the Prince of Peace. He'll bring peace in your heart. When he brings forgiveness, when he brings salvation, there'll be peace in your heart. And he is the Holy Prince. And he gives dominion. You understand? The kind of dominion he gives, the kind of dominion he has, and the dominion he gives to you. Christ is not like somebody that has genuine currency. And then he also has counterfeit currency that will not buy anything in the market. When you say, help me, help me, help me, he says, okay, he's shouting too much, come. And then with the left hand, he goes to the left pocket and he gives you false Fake counterfeit currency just to silence you. Go, don't trouble me anymore. And then when you go to the market, the thing cannot buy anything. Christ doesn't have any counterfeit currency. Give me a good amen. amen. The kind of dominion he had for himself, that the kind he will give to you. The kind of deliverance that he had, pure, that is always working, and that is permanent. That's the kind of deliverance he will give to you tonight. And a kind of free mind, peace of mind, no condemnation. Because the fullness of salvation dwells and abides in him. That's the kind he will give you tonight. The kind of freedom he enjoyed. That's the kind of freedom he comes and he gives us not a substandard freedom, not a fake freedom, not counterfeit freedom. You have the genuine freedom tonight in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. 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 What truth do you know that can set you free? God says, I am God, I change not. Is that true? Once yes. you know that truth, accept that truth, believe that truth, you're free tonight. Jesus Christ, the same, yesterday, today, and forever. Is that true? Uh -huh. If that is true, and you receive that truth, and you believe that truth, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved whosoever 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 in delta state whosoever in nigeria whosoever in africa whosoever in the rest of the world whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved is that true you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Look at verse 36. In verse 36, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Say good amen. amen. If anything binds you, anything ties your leg, anything ties your hand, anything blindfolds your eyes, that bandage of the devil the Lord will take it away tonight in Jesus because if the son if the son if the son shall therefore shall make you free ye shall be free indeed now look up here look at this goat the goat is tied down 
and the goat is tied to a pole. The goat sees other animals, even little chicks and chickens walking about, and he wants to be free. And how is he going to be free? That thing that binds him to that pole, to that tree, must be removed. Can I tell you, another goat like itself, another goat, even bigger goat or smaller goat or smarter goat, cannot go there and release that goat. It's a goat that is tied. It's another goat that is coming. No goat can deliver another goat and set that goat free. But a man higher than the goat, a man higher in intelligence, higher in understanding, higher in wisdom, higher in ability to untie rope or even cut the rope. A man higher than that goat can deliver and set that goat free. Is that right? When a goat like itself cannot deliver or set that goat free, the higher man, because man is higher than that goat, can set that goat free. When yourself, you are bound, and somebody like you, a man like you, a woman like you, the same height, the same color, the same local language, and they do all that they can do, and the goat cannot set the other goat free, so man may not be able to set the other man free. But there is one higher than all of us, greater than all of us. What's his name? Jesus. It's higher. The understanding we don't have, he has. The intelligence we don't have, he has. And then it comes to you there where you are parambulating around because of the thing that ties you. He says, I come to set you free. From your sin, he comes to set you free. From your yoke disease, he comes to set you free. And if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, tell me, Tell me, tell me. Shout it to the heavens. Praise the Lord, you are free. You're free from sin. You're free from sickness. You're free from Satan. When Christ comes, Satan has to step aside. And he goes aside forever from your life. And now you have forgiveness, you have freedom, you have deliverance, you have dominion. Congratulations. Tonight is the night of your freedom. It's what comes to you. And that word breaks every yoke in your life. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Christ. It's everywhere present now. It's present with you there. With two or three are gathered in my name there. I am in the midst of them. It's there by your side. He knows your heart. He knows what you are believing now. Once Christ forgives me, I'm forgiven. I am saved. I'm set free. It's by your side there now. You want the freedom. Freedom from sin. Freedom from every condemnation and you want to have peace between you and God wherever you are forgiveness has arrived salvation has arrived raise up your hands and that forgiveness comes son thy sins be forgiven thee daughter thy sins be forgiven thee raise up that hand raise up that hand amen amen I say amen for you Say amen for yourself now. You rise up, you are raising up your hand. You want to be free from the shackles, the chains. You want to be free from the condemnation of sin. Because Christ, the Son of God, Christ, 
our Savior, our Lord, he pronounces forgiveness on you. Raise up your hand and stand up and say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. This is what I've been waiting for. I want forgiveness. I want freedom. I want the rope of sin that bound me. Even when I said I will not do it again, I still do it again. The one that comes to set free has come to you now. He will forgive you. Stand, stand, stand up and say, Lord, I give myself to you. I will not no more go back to those evil things as you forgive and as you cleanse me now. Wash all my sins away. We are praying, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, forgive all those who are asking for forgiveness right now. Take the condemnation away from their heart and take the trauma, the trouble, the expectation of punishment, take it away from their lives in Jesus' name. Set them free from the power of that sin, that they will go out now free in Christ, free in the Lord, and they will live in newness of life in Jesus' name. It is done. I accept. It is done. I believe. It is done. And I have the confirmation of my forgiveness in his word that cannot fail. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Another amen. An assuring amen. God bless you. Our counselors are there. And they'll quickly come to you and get the details from you. Now you have the joy of salvation. Now you have the peace that comes of salvation. God bless you. We'll call our minister to help us during this time of counseling. And amen. Please counsel us. Let's do that smartly, quickly. Please, if you are standing up, let them see you. Let's spread ourselves all over the field. Let's be smart about it, please. Let's walk smartly. The Lord has saved you. There's no doubt about that. You believe the words. It is done. Welcome to the kingdom of God. The angels are rejoicing in heaven because of you. Please, let's be smart, let's be fast in taking their names. Please give the correct names and the address so that we can reach you and then help you further in your newfound faith. Quickly. And please, if you are watching online and you just give your life to Christ after the pastor's message tonight, there is a link gck.org slash connect below the player. Just click on it and fill the form so that we can assist you further your new work with Christ. I repeat again, you are watching online and you have given your life to Christ after the pastor's message this evening. You click on this link, gckhq.org slash connect. It's below your player. Click on it and fill the form so we can assist you further in your new work with Christ. Also, if you are listening via radio or television and you just gave your life to Christ, please send your name, 
your phone number, and your location address via SMS or WhatsApp. And I'm going to give you the number. The number is plus 234-9154-449263. I'll repeat the number again. You are watch, watching and listening via radio or television. And you have given your life to Christ. We want to have your name, your phone number, and your address through SMS or WhatsApp. The number again, plus 234-9154-449263. Counselors, God bless you. Let's do that smartly. Please, if they have not reached you, uh, maybe they have passed you, please just wave your hand. The essence of this crusade is what you are doing right now. The angels are rejoicing because you have come to the kingdom. So let's do it quickly, smartly too, and let's get the details correctly. If your place, maybe there is no address, Give a little description how we can get to that place at the back of the form. Let's do that quickly. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. There will be a special meeting. Title, Launch Hour with Jesus. For all those who give their life to Christ. Since we started on Thursday, Friday, today. If for this alpha location here, there is this story building. We have a tent behind that story building. By 3 p.m. tomorrow, you ought to be there. That is after the service. Actually, maybe after the service, you don't need to go home. I believe the lunch will be provided for you. Instead of going home and coming back for the evening crusade, you just stay behind for that uh, lesson, I believe you will be fed, and then you are taught as well. That's tomorrow after the service. Please, let's do that. There will be special believers banquet. We call it Converse Rally. For all those who gave their life to Christ during the crusade, we are having right now. The first Sunday of September, that is, and it's also 1st September 2024, in all our churches, not just this Alpha location alone, but globally. So we have the Comat Rally, 1st September 2024, in all our location. The designated places will be, you will be told in your own local area there where you are listening, right? So let's ensure that we do that. But for this Alpha location, we are having our banquet at the headquarters of this church, Deep Alive Bible Church, by Deco Road. It's a popular place that if you are living in this town, you will know. And then for other region in Delta State, please will hold us at the region headquarters. Here in Wari region, we are holding it at the headquarters church in Deco Road. So let's make ourselves available by 3 p.m. on the 1st of September 2024. That is after tomorrow's Sunday, the next Sunday. The Lord God will bless you in Jesus' name. It appears as if you have gone home. I said the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. That is good. Counselors, where are you? Please, let's be, far, let's be thorough about it. Get the right name. If I give you the phone number, they must, must 11 digits. Please, let's do that on time. 
and then you begin to give me a sign if you are done with it. And our counselor that are there, please, you need to remain there because tonight is a night of performance. Shout performance. See the way you are saying it. You are not sure. Performance. You will receive your needed miracle. So the counselor stay there. You are going to bring them out. Some of them will jump out by themselves and start running, just as we saw yesterday. It will happen again today. But remain over there and bring them as the pastor pray. It's always definite, sure, miracle will reach you there in Jesus' name. A louder amen. amen. Counselors, I can see some of you coming back. Please. I need information. Let me start by left hand side to the my own left hand side, but your own right hand side to the pulpit. If you are done, somebody should tell me either you wear the flag or whatever sign. All right, I'm not seeing any. What about my middle? Please, I ask some, some choir member, they are coming back. There are still some people at the back. Let's go and help them far back, even on the language class. Okay, the middle, are you waving the flag or you are just testing it? That's great. Thank you very much. Okay, I can also see my far right. Right. Okay, I can see the far back. God bless you. I'm waiting for my left hand side. That's your right hand side of the pulpit. I'm waiting to see any sign. Please. There are a lot of people there. Let's help them to get the names. The essence of this GCK is to save souls. So let's do that smartly, quickly. I'm waiting for those by my left hand side, yours, your right hand side to the stage. Let's remember that by the grace of God, this program continues tomorrow. We have Double dose. Everybody shout double dose. You don't believe what? Say double dose. One in the morning and one in the, the injection. Spiritual injection. We quicken our mortal body. You didn't believe? Shout a louder amen. amen. So tell your neighbors tomorrow this place will be. You, you have to come on time or else you will be standing all through. I believe everyone will be jam-packed. Down to the interpretation class over there, or language classes. Yes, I'm waiting for those by my left-hand side. I want to see the flag. Oh, that is great. That means we are true. The night of possibility. Everybody shout, night of possibility. You receive right now. I receive. Did you hear that man speak the word only? And my servant shall be healed. You got it tonight. Performance in your life tonight. Confirmation of miracle, healing, deliverance in your life tonight. In Jesus' name. Once you hear the final amen, Christ has set you free. Raise up your hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Your miracle has arrived. Just by your side there. And the final amen will attach the miracle unto you. Raise up that hand, lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Father, in Jesus' name, we know you are here tonight. Christ, the healer, is here tonight. The Holy Ghost is here tonight. And you will quicken everyone in their bodies in Jesus' name. From the top of your head to the tip of your toe. Miracle. Healing. Deliverance. 
Lord, confirm it for everyone in Jesus' name. Demon, evil spirit in the head, tormenting the brain, come out in Jesus' name. Pain in the chest, in the joints, in the elbow, in the wrist, pain on the waist, on the knees, pain in the ankle, pain anywhere, everywhere pain is. Come out in Jesus' name. Eternal problem, also be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Prostrate, be healed in Jesus' name. Asthma, be healed in Jesus' name. An ear, be healed in Jesus' name. And walking things, walking about in your body, come out in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, receive your sight right now. Deaf ears, dumb tongues, be loosed and set free right now. And I pray for those who are lame on the wheelchair and they are holding on to uh, crutches. Lord, I pray, deliver them right now. Strength come into your body. Power in your body. And Lord, I pray for everyone receiving right now. I pray they will not go back home with any sickness in their body. To my right, to my left, my front, healing for you, deliverance for you, miracle for you. Those on television, on radio, anywhere, everywhere we're connected together, healing, deliverance, and miracle. It is done because the name of Jesus brings healing. Brings deliverance, brings signs and wonders, and it brings great, great manifestation. Confirm it, Lord. Perform it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. For me, it is done. In my body, it is done. Thank you, Lord. Confirmation everywhere. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 